Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. This time around, we're talking about Enter the Gungeon. This game is described as a procedurally generated roguelike game with bullet hell aspects, and that is an apt description because this is a tough game and a challenging game. It's definitely clear early on that the game relies more on player skills than grinding and finding better items and clawing your way through. I say this because the game doesn't give up the goods immediately, and that might be bothersome to some roguelike fans. I've seen some Binding of Isaac and Nuclear Throne fans kind of just not feeling this. However, these aspects didn't bother me. I am very hooked on this game. The gameplay is very addictive here. And in terms of gameplay style, it somewhat falls in the middle in terms of like dungeon exploration and the feel of shooting. Some might find that other games might do one aspect in particular better, but overall Enter the Gungeon here is just a polished package that's fun and really does everything it sets out to do pretty right. What I think makes it different here is the emphasis on the bullet hell stuff. It really does ramp up and get incredibly difficult with bullets going everywhere and it's your job to navigate or dodge through them. And also I think the thing that gives this game its edge is that Devolver digital style, that offbeat weird but pretty good sense of humor here, combined with the old school graphical style as well as the music. Production values here are pretty top notch. It's good stuff and it's enjoyable. So the game starts giving you four characters with later on two unlockable characters and each character is pretty similar. The Marine character having an extra set of armor, so if you suck, maybe he's the first character you should try to play as. And really the other characters all just have a slight different ability and come with a different weapon loadout. But those weapon differences I think are strong enough for each person who plays the game to really have their own distinct character to play with. Basically, the game gives you a tutorial that describes things pretty well, and then it sends you on your way to work through levels of a dungeon. Later on in the game, when you work your way through the dungeons, you can choose to start at the third floor, but that's basically the whole, the whole thing here in the dungeon crawling is fighting enemies, finding keys, looking for treasure chests that gives you items and weapons, cashing in your currency at the shop to buy better upgrades and weapons, finding these extra special keys that'll save NPCs that you can use outside of the dungeons to upgrade you permanently, and of course, fighting bosses. All the shooting here works very well. It feels like a twin stick shooter. It's fast, responsive, smooth. The dodge roll button works great. The ability to kick over tables and hide behind them is kind of a novelty, but does come in handy sometimes. And I do enjoy the enemy variety here. Every single room, you don't know what you're gonna get. There's a lot of the lower tier your enemies, which are literally just bullets that carry guns and try and shoot you. I know that makes no sense. But your tactics will change a lot thanks to all these different enemies that do different things. There's snipers, there's fast moving enemies, shotgun enemies, and the higher dungeon level you go, the more damage that some of these enemies will start to absorb. I do really like the bosses here. They're clever, they're hilarious, they reference a lot of things, including Doom and Metal Gear Solid I'm a big fan of. Uh, but they can also get insanely, insanely challenging. And that's what's hitting a lot of roguelike fans, is the fact that sometimes you can get into that first boss without really necessarily picking up a better weapon other than the base weapon. So then whittling down the first enemy boss's health just kind of sucks and gets a little boring. This isn't always the case, but sometimes in the game that happens. And like I said, it's because the game doesn't want to give up the goods early. Overall, I think what saves it is that the boss fights are just challenging and engaging and they keep your concentration for the entire time and you're gonna be sweating. The one aspect here that I think really hurts the game and leaves a little bit to be desired for me is the design. Now that's always fine, but just the level design here isn't that great great. The rooms aren't very exciting, be it visually or layout wise. And I know it's all really about the shooting, but there's just not really a lot going on in the environments. There's breakable stuff, but none of it really matters. And there's not a lot of interactivity or just thingies to do or shoot or click on, save for the occasional chandelier drop or explosive barrel. Despite that though, for a $15 game, there is a lot here. There's well over 150 guns, I think. And there are definitely some duds though, just be warned. You know, you're going to be trudging your way through a dungeon and then you're going to pick up like a a t-shirt cannon gun or a super soaker water gun and you're gonna be pissed but there's a lot of cool shit there's cool guns revolvers shotguns machine guns and there's even like references to stuff like ghostbusters star wars other movies and then even video game stuff like super meat boy and mega man you can actually get the mega buster from mega man and i think that's pretty cool there's also hundreds and hundreds of items i think over 300 that'll definitely keep you playing for a while because like i said the gameplay here is addictive and it feels good and it's always just a one more try one more dungeon one more pick up and play that's gonna keep you coming back and picking up the controller or the keyboard and mouse, especially for the $15 price tag that this game warrants. I think there's two different types of players that are gonna be playing this game. If you're a Binding of Isaac player, you're really hardcore with it, you're either gonna enjoy and appreciate this game or you're gonna not be into what it does. But then on the flip side, if you're a player who hasn't played those games and are just looking for like, you know, a roguelike or a bullet hell or just a shooting fun indie game, you're gonna have a blast here. So it's really 50-50 here for some and might depend on what type of gamer you are, but I'd 
say for 15 bucks, I can definitely recommend it. There is a lot of gameplay here, and I think it's going to keep some of you guys very busy. But speaking of you guys, I do want to hear what you guys think about Enter the Gungeon down in the comments below. Are you a fan of this genre? Does this do things right? Is it a little too boring for you? And how do you feel about the balancing? For me, it didn't bother me, but I think if you picked up a lot of these other games, you might notice some little things here and there. But overall, I just like the shooting, I like the bosses, I love the humor, and I want to know if it clicked with you guys too. So let's talk anything Enter the Gungeon down in the comments below. I'll be there, and I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino. If you like this video, and maybe we steered you towards a new game, clicking the like button helps us out so much, and we really appreciate it. But if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, you should do that, because we put out new videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.